Today we're going to go over simplifying radicals. Um, so we've done this a little bit in other um, notes, but we've never just focused completely on it. And after we have done these notes today, every test that you take, you will be expected to simplify the radicals because we're going to spend an entire day on it. <clears throat> so first of all, perfect squares. It's a number where the square root gives you a whole number answer. So perfect squares, one of them is 1 because it 1 squared is equal to 1. The next one is 4, and that's because 2 squared is equal to 4. Um, 9, 3 squared is 9. 16, 4 squared is 16. 25, 5 squared is 25. 36 because 6 squared is 36, 49, because 7 squared is 49, 64, because 8 squared is 64, 81, because 9 squared is 81, and 100, because 10 squared is 100. Now, of course, there's many, many more than that. It's just all the squares up to 10. So just to be clear, the ones that are the actual perfect squares are these, um, and then the right part is just telling you why it's a perfect square. Because if you take the square root of one, it's one. The square root of four is two. The square root of nine is three, and they're perfect whole numbers. <clears throat> so whenever we have square roots, there are two different ways that you can simplify the radical. Um, and it just kind of depends how comfortable you are with the perfect squares. Um, if you aren't very perf very comfortable with them, doing a factor tree is the best way to start out. It doesn't mean that you always will end up doing it that way, but it's the easiest way to start out. So 27 is 3 times 9. 3 is a prime number, so we know that's as far down as it can go because the only other number that can go into 3 is 1. 9 is made by 3 times 3, and as already stated, 3 is a prime number, which means that the square root of 27 is the same thing as saying 3 times 3 times 3. And then anything that's on the inside in pairs will come out of the square root as 1. So 1, 3 will come out for the pair of 3s. And then the 1 that is still left has to stay under... The square root. So three square roots of three is the answer. Now if you are good with those perfect squares, you might see that the square root of 27 is the same thing as the square root of 9 times 3, which is the same thing as saying the square root of 9 times the square root of 3, and the square root of 9 is 3. So this would be your answer. And it's just, um, and I can move this over here. So the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 3 stays there. So 432 is a harder one um, because you would, it's a much bigger number. So it makes it a lot harder. Um, but it's even. So for me, even I couldn't come up with a big number that goes into 432, but it ends in a 2. So we know that 2 goes in there. So whenever you divide it, and 2 is a prime number. I circle all the prime numbers so that I know I'm done with that part of the tree. Um, and then when you divide by 2, it gives you 216. Still, I'm not real sure of a big number that goes into 216. But it ends in a 6, which means it's even. So it's divisible by 2. And when you divide it by 2, you have 108. Well, 108 is 2 times 54. And 54 is 9 times 6, neither of which are prime. 6 is 2 times 3, both of which are prime. And then 9 is 3 times 3, which means that the square root of 432 is the same thing as there's 1, 2, 3, 4 twos. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And there are one, two, three, threes. 
So for each pair, one comes out. And then the one that's left stays in. Two times two is four, times three is 12 square roots of three. Now, if you're unlike me and you can see that the square root of 432 is also the square root of 144 times three, that's one, uh, that is a perfect square, 144 is. So 144 times the square root of three. The goal of this, the right hand side, is to find the largest perfect square that can go into it. And the square root of 144 is 12, and then square roots of 3. So for 192, again, I'm not real sure what goes into it, but I know it's even. And 96 goes into that. I know that 3 will go into 96, and so would 2. So you could pick whichever one you want, but... 3 goes into 6, and 3 goes into 9, so 3 goes into it with 32 left over. Well, 32 is 8 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2. 8 is 2 times 4, and then 4 is 2 times 2. So the square root of 192 is the same thing as there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 twos. and then a three. All of these pairs can come out. And then that square root of three would stay under. Two times two is four, times another two is eight square roots of three. Now your perfect square way you might have recognized that um, 64 can go into 192. So it's 64 times 3 gives me 192. And I can separate those. And if you look up above, 64 is a perfect square for 8. So you can get it both ways. It just depends which way you recognize first. Um, it can also be done if there's a number on the outside. So 8 is still 2 times 4 and 4 is 2 times 2, which means that this gives me 3, and then instead of the square root of 8, it's 2 times 2 times 2, which makes 8. Um, this 3, just rewrite it. A 2 comes out, and then that 2 has to stay in. 3 times 2 is 6 square roots of 2. Now you could recognize that eight is four times two and done it this way, which is the same thing as three times the square root of four times the square root of two. And then the square root of four is two and three times two is six. So that's just basic simplifying. And then we have to do other things like multiply and divide by square roots, which we're going to have to do whenever we deal with um, special right triangles, which is a part of this unit we're about to go over. So whenever we multiply radicals, you multiply the whole numbers first. So three times four is 12. And then you multiply the square roots that are on the inside. So 6 times 14 is 84. And then you need to reduce it from there. So um, you can, of course, do um, the factor tree thing. But at this point, I'm going to do it using perfect squares just because it's a little bit faster. Um, so 84 is the same thing as 4 times 21. The square root of 4 is 2, and 12 times 2 is 24. And you know that 21 is, it, is as low as it goes because 21 is 7 times 3, both of which are prime. Same thing over here. 5 times 2 is 10. 
6 times 3 is 18. So you could recognize that this is 9 times 2, which is the square root of 9 and the square root of 2. And the square root of 9 is, of course, 3, which makes it 30 square roots of 2. Four times negative three is negative 12. The square root of 10 times the square root of two is the square root of 20. 20 is the same thing as four times five, which is the square root of four times the square root of five. The square root of four is two. And negative 12 times two is negative 24. Um, and then we have some exponents. 12 times 12 is 144. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Then we have the square root of 144 and the square root of x to the fourth. The square root of 144 is 12, um, but x to the fourth, I want to show you what that means. That's like x times x times x times x, right? So remember I told you any pairs come out as a whole one. So x to the fourth comes out as x squared. And that's your answer. All right, whenever you divide radicals, you cannot have a square root in a denominator. It is not proper. It's a big deal. Um, and we will have to deal with this whenever we get into special right triangles as well. So in order to get this square root of 3 out of the denominator, you're going to multiply both the top and the bottom by a square root of 3. So on the top, the square root of 2 times square root of 3 is the square root of 6. And on the bottom, the square root of 3 times square root of 3 is the square root of 9. And we know that the square root of 9 is 3. So that's your answer. We cannot have the square root of 6 in the denominator, so you multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 6. 2 times 6 is 12. 6 times 6 is 36. 12 is, this, <clears throat> excuse me, is the same thing as 4 times 3. And the square root of 36 is 6. So square root of 4 times the square root of 3. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And then you can reduce this part of your fraction. 2 will go into both of those. 2 will go into 4 twice. And 2 will go into 6 three times. So your final answer is 2 square roots of 3 over 3. We cannot have this square root of 5 in the denominator, so we got to multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 5. 3 times 5 is 15, and that can't be reduced because 3 and 5 are prime. 5 times 5 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. And our fraction can't be reduced um, because 5 is prime. Multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 3 to get it out of the denominator. 8 times 3 is 24. 3 times 3 is 9. So 24 is the same thing as 4 times 6. And the square root of 9 is 3. At this point, you could go ahead and get rid of the denominator if you want and just say that that's 2. Um, it just kind of depends whenever you recognize it. 
So you could say that this is 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. You could do it at this point. Um, it just depends if you recognize that you can divide those or not. But I'll show you. Um, if you didn't recognize it, how you would do it at the end. So the square root of 4 and the square root of 6 divided by 3. The square root of 4 is 2. 6 times 2 is 12. And then 12 divided by 3 is 4 square roots of 6. And that's the end of our notes.